Who do I want to be today? It's a question I constantly ask myself before leaving my house. And the answer was different every day. For most of my life, being myself was a challenge. I always worried about what was popular and socially accepted, but the more I tried, the more I alienated myself from the people that actually cared for me. I found it hard to relate with my peers, even those I wanted to be like. This state of mind led me to internal isolation, which darkened my disposition. Growing up, I was clearly an outcast, but I found that through music, film, and the right friends, I began to compose my character, capture my persona, and reveal my own interests. At home, I was a keen extrovert, as opposed to being a shy introvert at school. School has always been tough for me, socially, but what really got to me was that everyone around me had their own interests, and well, I lacked that. Knowing myself from elementary school, I had a tendency to copy what everyone else was doing, and not what I wanted to do. I wanted to expand my creativity and capabilities, but I didn't know how. So I did what I thought was best for me, copy the cool kid. He who shall not be named played soccer and basketball and everyone seemed to kneel down before him. This third grade stud wore highlighter green gym clothing and flaunted his spiked up blonde hair. This is the coolest guy ever. I did whatever I had to do to be next to my comrade. These kids wouldn't associate with copycats, so I mimicked them from a distance. At around 14 years old, I started to find the reason behind my inability to pick the right people through various films I had seen. About three times a month, I would go to my uncle's house and watch movies. For me, these weekends were something to look forward to. One night, he decided to play Danny Boyle's cult classic film, Trainspotting. If you haven't seen the film, it follows Mark Renton, a Scottish lowlife and adrenaline junkie through criminal acts and consequences with his untrustworthy friends. Now, despite the film's abundant collection of skin-crawling moments, there is one scene that affected me the most. When Mark Renton realized he had to change the people he was associated with, specifically his best friends. Mark realizes his friend's true intentions once he finds a steady job and a place to stay. His friends use up his hard-earned money for their own benefit. Mark is aware of this and decides to flee from the toxic relationship. It took me a while to realize why he would do such a thing and why Mark's epiphany affected me so greatly. After repeating the scene in my head several times, I realized that he gained the maturity to move on from unhealthy influences. Change has been a rough thing to face for the past couple of years. I was always scared of changing into someone no one would like, but I did it without realizing. Like Mark Renton, I hung out with a group of friends that never brought the best out of me, and they didn't like me for who I actually was. I was stuck in this group where being myself wasn't an option, thus forcing me to become someone I'm not proud of. My grades dropped, I became aggressive towards my family, and I was becoming my own worst enemy. My parents realized that the more I hung out with this group, the more I was frustrated and angry with everyone around me, including myself. I pushed real friends away just to fit in. Eventually, I distanced myself from this group because it became clearly toxic to my well-being. These friendships didn't last long for me, and due to my behavior in the past, I was left with little to no support. I was in a dark one-year period of feeling lost, not knowing where to channel my sadness. I acted normal on the outside, meanwhile my perception was continuously darkening. I was left with nothing but dreams of finding myself while ignoring what made me, me. My identity constantly changed every day, just to be with the people that I thought would come for me in my unspoken grief. Until one day when my mom told me about a group of teenagers who played in a band. I joined this band with only six months of singing lessons and piano lessons I got when I was nine. I didn't have much to offer, but it was worth the shot. Upon arrival, I was aimlessly walking around the instruments, not knowing what to do. Do I pick up a guitar, or do I go to the piano? Standing there mindlessly, I turned to the bass. I wasn't sure how to react to such a unique-looking instrument. 
it only has four strings? I asked myself. I picked it up and looked for a tutorial for the song Feel Good Inc. by Gorillaz. After a painful mess of pressing down on what felt like telephone pole wires, I rang my first note. My body was in a trance. Feeling the intense vibration of the bass, it formed a force field of low frequencies closing me into comfort. In awe, I begged the guitarist Pato to lend me his bass for a week. I kept it for a month. And I want to thank you for that, Pato. In that month, I was diving deep into the world of the bass. The bass guitar's role is to create a melodic and rhythmic atmosphere for the other components of the song to exist in. Its absence is sometimes more noticeable than its presence. The bass's influence is minimal and yet drastic. Personally, I found oneness with this instrument. Playing enabled me to express audibly the position I found myself living in, a supporter for others most noticed in absence. Bass gave me a sense of tranquility, and it made me realize that I was capable of playing a significant role in the lives of others, even this life in general. I hadn't ever felt fully confident in my appearance or my personality, but I learned that I can create atmospheres of my own each person's individuality is built to mix harmonically with others. I soon realized that being myself, doing what I wanted to do, and being with those I actually love, shapes a world I like living in. Overall, I learned that there is a lot of importance in choosing your friends. The people we surround ourselves with undoubtedly contribute to the ways we act and see ourselves. Acquaintances can become extremely influential some friends impact you greatly themselves, and others can introduce you to paths that you're meant to take. Either they disappear along the way, or they stay with you until the day you die. But once you find the right people in life, it is easier to find your passions. As humans, we are innately social. Finding people with the same values and similar mindsets is an obvious comfort. It just takes the right amount of patience and open-mindedness to find healthy relationships. I will leave you with a poem by Charles Bukowski. There are worse things than being alone, but it often takes decades to realize this. And most often, when you do, it's too late. And there is nothing worse than too late. Thank you.